Okay, we are live. Good to see everybody. It is Thursday, May 11th, 2023, here in Las Vegas, 547 Pacific Time, 547 p.m. Pacific Time, that is. Again, I'm glad to see everybody. We have another live unboxing here. We have the Dell XPS 13 here, right into the studio. Now, this is, of course, the refresh for 2023, and this has a 13th gen processor. We'll get into everything, of course, in this unboxing, this live unboxing. Now, I this is one I purchased with my own money. I do have one coming from Dell, which will be a little bit different from this one. So we'll try to vary it up so we can do a comparison and so forth. But that is uh, coming, not just yet, it's, it's gonna be very soon. But I wanted to get this one in. This is the Platinum model, 13th gen processor, the Core i7-1360P. So uh, we're going to get it out of the box. Good to see everybody as we have 27 of you starting this live stream off. Now, let's, uh, let's do one thing before we get started and before we say hello to everybody. Let's take a look at the specs. What do you say? So as they're coming onto the stream here, you're looking at a 13.4-inch OLED display. We saw this last year, 3.5K. 3456 by 2160. It is an Infinity Edge touch display, anti-reflective coating, 400 nit. We've seen it, it's gorgeous. This has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It says 512 gigabytes of storage. Comes in at 2.77 pounds or 1.26 kilograms with the OLED model, a little less for the four, full HD plus or even the 4K plus that they offer this in. Price you're looking at uh, 1849 as configured here. It does start at 1399 for this refresh 13th gen model for the with the 13th gen processor. But you could also get last year's model or last year with the 12th gen for less money. I think that starts at around. I think it's going to come up on the screen in a moment. I think that starts at around 899. So I think these are pretty interesting choices here. That's the one I have here. Let me fast forward a little bit. Yeah, here it is, 899. That's the entry model from the 12th gen processor Core i5 with a full HD plus display. All right, so with that out of the way, that's the specs of this unit. This is gonna be all internal in terms of the refresh. Now, keep in mind something, please keep this in mind. Now, the Dell XPS 13 Plus was refreshed last year. It was a pretty radical redesign. 
over the traditional model that we saw over the years. So we're just iterating on that at this point. I don't think Dell is going to do a major revision after last year, obviously. So they're going to let this evolve. And now we're going to get hopefully better performance, better efficiency, better cooling, better battery life with this 13th gen processor. Now we have uh, William here. Good to see you. We have Raphael here. And it looks like last year's model because it's ba it basically is last year's model with a refresh. So again, exterior is going to be the same where you're going to see the changes are going to be under the hood. All right. And we have, uh, t uh, I don't even want to try to pronounce your name, but you can't wait for this unboxing and review as we have 39 of you. Now do me a favor. If you have a question or comment, make sure you put a cue before it so I can get uh, I could identify it pretty easily in the chat. And of course, super stickers, super chats are open. I went out of box, I went out of box, it will, be, it will be out of the box. I went out of pocket on this one because I simply wanted, I couldn't wait. You know, I could have waited for Dell to send it, but I decided what the hell, let's just do it uh, as we normally do. And again, the box is right there. So we can get this thing out of the box. We already have about 40 of you watching. So let's just do it. Let me set up the shot here. And let me bring in my unboxing knife here and let's get the other microphone going and we will get this unboxed. So without further ado, let's get this out of the box. Okay, so pretty typical so far. We've seen this before. And again, they didn't even change the model number. It's still the 9320, but with a 13th gen processor. So here you can see 9320 here. And then if you want to see it here, there you go. And you get some warranty information and so forth. So pretty standard stuff. Let's file that to the side. Now, again, like last year, you get a couple of extra accessories. You get the... USB-A to USB Type-C adapter, which is always appreciated. Again, there's no USB-A port on this model. And then you get your headphone jack adapter to USB-C, 3.5 millimeter to USB Type-C. Okay. And then, of course, you get a very compact 60-watt uh, power adapter. We saw that last year, and we're seeing it again this year. Very, very compact. And then, of course, you get your USB Type-C cable, okay? And you can see here the power cord. So pretty standard stuff that we've seen before. So nothing too surprising. And again, we know what we're going to expect with this. We're just getting a refresh under the hood. Okay, let me just adjust the camera for one second. Give me a moment. I don't want this to be a little overblown, so I wanted to make sure that was okay. Now, here we go. This is that gorgeous platinum color. Of course, we've seen this before. You could see it here. This is absolutely gorgeous. I went with this last year as well. I love the way this looks. Now, I do have the graphite model. And that's right here. So for those of you that wanted to, you know, can't decide between graphite and platinum, 
here are the two side by side. Again, physically are going to be the same. So, but where you're going to see the difference, of course, you'll see less fingerprints on this one than you would on this one. We'll take a look at this 12th gen in, in a little bit. And of course I did my review on that. All right, let's see if we can open this with one finger. We certainly can, and there she is. Absolutely gorgeous once again goes far back as you see here. So you want to take a look at this. There is that platinum model right here. And this has the OLED display as well. So very, very nice. We'll get, uh, let's get a measurement on this. Let's bring out the scale. Okay. And let's turn that on. And we'll get a travel weight as well. We'll put the charger and everything. So let's get that to zero. Right now it's on pounds. We'll, we'll, we'll also check out the kilograms and so forth. So according to this, 2.13 pounds. And with the travel weight, 3.27 pounds, okay? So that's pretty light. And then, of course, if we want to look at kilograms alone without the charging adapter. That one is 1.277. All in, travel weight, 1.436 kilograms. Okay, that's the weight. Okay, and this is the keyboard. Let's give it a listen. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's check out the port selection. It's going to be minimal. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off on the left side where you get your USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port. Full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. On the right side, guess what is a second USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is also full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now, I do like the fact that they are separated. They're not on the same side of each other, so it gives you a little bit more options when plugging it in. You don't have to have the wires on the same side. That is a benefit. But of course, no USB-A no HDMI, no headphone jack, right? So you have those adapters in the box. You don't get HDMI, but you do get a headphone adapter in the box and a USB-A to USB-C adapter. So not a great port selection, but then, you know, we, we've, got, we've had that situation before. All right, we got our first super chat, all right, of the evening, and it's from our good fr friend, Pete Fox. Okay. Appreciate it, my friend. $20 super chat. Very generous of you, and I do appreciate it. So it dev definitely helps support the channel. I did go out of pocket on this, so definitely every little thing helps, especially at this time of the year when things are a little bit down, views are a little bit down and so forth. So anything certainly helps keep it going because, again, I'm – Doing this fast and furious, as you know. All right, so let's, uh, we got to look at the keyboard. I absolutely love the keyboard on this. Now let's plug this in and I'm going to get it all set up here. So let's plug it to my Thunderbolt dock here. It's a Dell Thunderbolt dock and let's turn it on for the first time. It says XPS. You can see it there. It is a beautiful looking laptop, probably the most beautiful looking laptop I've seen in a long time. So let's just hit the, now let me show you this. Interestingly enough, we're not getting the PWM like we had last year. So it's not flickering too bad. Remember last year was flickering a lot more. I think I adjusted the settings on my camera. That might be one of the reasons. But again, this is the capacitive row and it lights up pretty nicely here. 
And then, of course, you can see the PWM a little bit here. But when you press the function button, you get these different keys and so forth, allowing you to get what you would have otherwise would be a physical function row, which they didn't go with on this. And then, of course, we have the haptic touchpad here. And it's actually worked out pretty well. It's actually worked out better than I expected. And last year, I think that major redesign was a was pretty radical. Yeah, no flickering this time, Raphael. I like that. I mean, in real in real life, by the way, it doesn't, you know, you won't see that. It's just that I like to have the best aesthetics when it comes to, you know, this live stream and so forth. All right, I'm going to set this up. Let me uh, put it back on me here while we set this up. Let me say Eng uh, English, yes. United States. And is this the... We want the United States. Why is it asking me Canada? Did I hit the wrong one? Uh, there it is, United States. Okay. And then U.S. keyboard. Skip that. All right, so I'm going to put it on me while I put in my password to my network love this keyboard oh i really you know even now after using this for a year same design right so i don't get tired of it it is a absolutely gorgeous laptop i know some people were critical of it for some reason i don't know why i think this is the one of the nicest looking laptops you can find out there right now i mean you can see it you know from the back here it is absolutely gorgeous look at thin thin and light that is all right, so let's um, let's get this all set up here. Let's see what people are saying. What material is the keyboard and palm rest? This is going to be Gorilla Glass, I believe. So this is glass, and this is metal. So this will be aluminum on the outside. Very, very well built. There's no flex or give whatsoever on this chassis. It's absolutely rock solid in terms of the build. And again, for those that want to see the graphite model, the difference, and I, I think I like the, you know, I love graphite, but I think I like the platinum a little bit um, better. Now, this is a full HD plus display, and we'll show you the difference between the two. But it, for those that are wondering which color to go with, well, it's a tough choice, to be honest with you, because I think they both look absolutely stunning. Let me make sure they're straight here. Um, this is the best looking laptop, Rico. I, I definitely wholeheartedly agree with you know I, I agree with you. I mean, it is absolutely stunning how gorgeous this laptop is. All right, so let me uh, we'll put we'll bring this back up in a little bit, and we'll take a look at the the XPS thirteen standard model as well that we have from last year as well. All right, so let me put this back on me while we get this set up here. So let's skip that for now, asking me the name because I'm going to log into my burner account. Uh, so, all right, unlock your Microsoft experience, sign in. All right, let me put in my credentials. Love the keyboard, people. Oh, it's like, like butter, as they say. Okay, so I'm adding in my account. I think they both look nice, Ghost. I agree. I think they both look nice. Okay, so let's uh, let's set it up as a new. More options. Set up as a new device. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to set up the Windows Hello. So I'm going to tell tell it yes. Set it up. Pretty, pretty seamless so far. Okay, let me put it back on me as I put in a. Okay, where's my passcode? Okay, here, we're going to set up a pin. All right. Okay. Waiting for a 16 inch. That would be pretty interesting, right? And again, I'm pretty confident 
that Dell has a few things up their sleeve for a big refresh next year when it comes to the XPS 15 and 17. And by the way, the 17 I do have coming tomorrow from Dell. So expect a lot of content from me, people. I got a lot of stuff coming in. All right, so let's go next. Preferences. Oh, I'm going to have to remove McAfee. Okay, next. Yeah, because I think this might have McAfee in it. And then we'll skip this. Okay. You can actually see what I'm doing. I have the OLED model for those wondering. So Darian, let me bring that onto the stream here. Darian got the graphite OLED after watching my vids. Okay, thank you. Love the detail, high de in depth review, and looks and looks at these laptops. All right, Darian, I agree. I mean, it's nice of you to say that you like my videos, of course. And let's uh, skip the Game Pass. Okay, we'll skip that. We're almost there, people. And let's see what's next. Looking for updates. So again, this is fresh out of the box retail packaging, not sent from Dell, just so you know, for those joining us late, 60 of you watching. And screen is completely blanked out. Okay. I'll have to lower the settings a little bit, maybe. When you say blanked out, do you mean blown out? It just depends. You can see it here. Well, it's actually just running its uh, initial setup here. So we'll get it. Screen is completely blanked out. Are you talking about the live stream? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, we'll get that fixed up. And good to see Michael Ohanian, Precision 5680 is coming out next week, 16 inch, very similar to the XPS. And Michael, I am looking forward to that. That's for sure. That is for sure. And... Yeah, and, uh, and Michael, are you going to be, uh, I think, isn't they going to have in, in Vegas the Dell, uh, what is it, the Dell World? What are they calling that? The Dell something world in Las Vegas? So let me know if you're going to be in town. Okay, so Michael Kitowski, I'm still slightly concerned about the thermals with the XPS 13 Plus. I heard it runs hot. I'm kind of tired of my current XPS 13, a couple of years old at this point. Um. Well, we're going to talk about thermals and everything. I did talk about it in my review from last year. But again, we're now talking about 13th gen processor. We have the same physical attributes as we do from last year. So I'm not expecting major strides here. But again, when you're in such a thin and light chassis as we have here, you're going to really have to deal with engineering on a different level, really, if you think about it, because 13th P series, 13th gen P series processor is what we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna uninstall McAfee right off the bat. So you can see what I'm doing here. All right, and let me also change the, oh, that's actually the correct time. So let me close that. Let me, and it's also a little bit, I don't like the scaling. Let me go to the settings here. And let me, first of all, let's, let's take off the auto brightness. Let's, let's take that off. Okay. And then let's also, let's go from 300, which is a little too much. Let's try 250. It's a little bit better. And again, we still have a 60 Hertz display as you see here, 60 Hertz. Okay. And then that sets that up. And now let me go, we're gonna remove McAfee here because I can't stand, um, let's go to the installed apps. I just don't want it. Oh, before I do that, hold on one second. Let me just unlink my OneDrive here. Okay, so I'm unlinking that, perfect. Okay, now we're good, now we're good. All right, so let's uninstall. McAfee. I don't, I don't want that on this computer. So let's uninstall that right off the bat. That's become a tradition here. I just wish they'd stop putting this into these laptops. Dell technology world. I will be in town for it. So Michael, let me know. Let me know. I, I, you know, I'll be around. So let me know. All right. You still have an active description. Let me remove that. Okay, does the does the 2023 version of the touch bar have a tactile feeling when you touch it? Um, 
So is there any haptics on the touch bar? So let's uh, take a look at that real quick. So what he's talking about, and there you can see the PWM in, in full force. Again, it's not flickering in real life. There's no haptic touchpad here. You do, get, you, of course you do get haptics, if it'll ever stay in focus. You do get haptics on the haptic touchpad, but you don't get haptics there, okay? And you see less screen flickering there. We'll get to your comments and questions in a moment. Okay, well, that's removing that. Actually, that's a good time to start doing that. Does the 2023 version of the touch bar have a tactile? We just talked about that. I like small size laptops. Good luck, Dominique. I I also like them. I like these ultra portables. Jordel uh, is, I don't think this is the size they have. the In this size, they have the room to do the tactile feel with the F keys. Now, I don't see that being something that they're doing. Dell Latitude 9440 on the way. Uh, I hope to get it very soon. That's all I'm going to, let's leave it at that. I did get a preview of it at the CES showcase they did, and I'm absolutely loving the design on that. In some ways, people are saying that that Latitude should be um, what this should be. In other words, they got they took a lot of this design language and put it into that commercial or business enterprise type of laptop. So let's restart this now. Okay, that's good. All right. And so I would like to see uh, get one into the studio. I know Dell is uh, has me on their list. So once they do have the review units in for that, I will be getting it. So stay tuned. I like it, Keyboard G, right? It was your connection. Okay, no worries, man. No worries, rough user. Um, so Ghost got the Precision 17 also from watching my video. One of my favorites already. You know that, right? Um, so there you go. Okay. And good to see digital slang here. Give it up for digital slang. And I, I know digital slang, you got the... I think you got... Did you pick up the Pixel 7a? I know... Um, I think I saw your your video pop up and it's on my list to watch. So if you didn't check out Digital Slang, make sure you head on over to his channel. So now that we removed the McAfee, we can now log into the account. All right, and we can get going on it. Where's the trackpad? <laughs> it's here. See, it's here. And again, I have a very glossy, I have a glossy display. I have a glossy, uh, we have a glossy display, although it does have some anti-reflective coating on it, but I do have a lot of studio lights. Keep that in mind. So the touchpad is here, right? So you don't see any lines to tell you where, where it's where, but it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty natural. And you were at the Google event in Brooklyn yesterday. Nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, not me, I wasn't there, but it would have been nice to go. Where's the trackpad? Again, I showed you where that is. All right, so let's uh, load in some stuff here. Let me go here and let me load in a few benchmarks. Actually, let me go to, let's confirm and continue, next, finish. Let's go to, let's try Geekbench. Now, I know for some reason we got the curse of John McAfee usually cursing me when it comes to the Geekbench simply because it never <laughs> wants to give me the result the first time around. It happened last few live streams. Let's see if it happens this time. We'll do, we'll, I'm a glutton for punishment, so let's see if it actually will work. Yeah, it's invisible. Uh, it's in the traditional areas. It's just invisible keyboard G. Right, you're correct. All right, so let's open this. And let's also go to the power and sleep settings. Let's make sure. So right now it's on balance. Let's put it on performance. I sort of hear the, the fans going right now. It's on performance. And let's also go to my Dell. See if there, we can change the power settings as well as far as the thermals and so forth. So I don't know. Let's see. Application. Say yes on this. Okay. Dolby Vision. Bright. Dark. Okay. Color and display. All right. kind of looks weird can i maximize this applications maybe so we got killer control center purchased apps maybe we just do it at the in the windows is controlling it I don't know. i'll play with it later let's uh let me close that let's get this set up happening in real time folks 
It is a touch screen, as you see there. Okay, let's uh, run Geekbench 6. Just to get a, again, with as a disclaimer, as I normally do, the benchmarks you're going to see on this live stream are not indicative because of what we're going to see in the full review, simply because I will be running updates. If there's a firmware update, I'll run that and so forth. Again, we're talking a 28 watt CPU and we're talking uh, right now, obviously 28 watts. We got 12 cores, eight efficient cores and six performance cores. I'm sorry, what did that, that's 14, I can't add, I'm really off tonight. <laughs> it's 12 cores, eight efficient cores, and four performance cores. Uh, maybe it's been a long day. Adriel is saying, I'm surprised that Dell XPS 13 line, they kept the XPS 13 plus line, it seemed like an experimental design that Dell was only going to try for one generation. No, I think they're invested in this. I think they, they're going all in, you know, and I don't blame them. I absolutely love this design, people. So you got, oh, this is good. KGL received his 9440 last week. Very nice laptop. Not so great for the wallet. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. That's for sure. That is for sure. Okay. So actually, let me put it back down on here. And let me see here. While that's running there, let me also set up some of the other benchmarks that I'll get ready. But oh, actually, I've already, I already have it. Never mind. Just strike that. All right, LG Graham Style made something similar with their trackpad. You know, I'd like to get that into the studio, but again, I haven't received anything from LG, so we'll have to wait and see on that, but that would be great to check that one out as well. I think I had the same long day. Sam had the same long day as me. All right. They should make the design in bigger models. Okay, so I'm going to say this. Okay, no, there's nothing official. I'm not giving you any kind of, not blowing any kind of secret or anything. It's time, right? With the XPS 15, I just did my review on that, 9530. It was a, simply an upgrade, much like this, where it's in the internals. The only difference is this one has a radical redesign, a redesign last year, and we're just iterating on that. Whereas that XPS 15 had a pretty much the same design for the last three or four generations, right? So I'm not seeing anything new this time around. When I, when I reviewed it, I said it, it's the same song, right? The song remains the same, which is a good thing in some respects because it's a tried and true design, as I mentioned. But at the same time, we want to see a, a redesign. And my guess, my educated guess is, is that they're going to go something along these lines, I guess, on the bigger models. So we'll see. We'll see. Again, this is a pretty radical redesign. I'm expecting something next year, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. All right. So with that being said, let's hopefully we'll get our result here. Iris XE is not going to be gangbusters, as I mentioned many times in the past, regarding the performance, right? So just keep that in mind. Did they get me a score here? Probably not. All right, let's, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do, let me restart it, and that usually does the trick. So let's restart it again. It's not the, the laptop, it's the, it's Geekbench 6, and I'm frustrated with this program. All right, so while that's restarting, it's a, it's a grown up XPS 13, and in some ways, yes. So Sam is not a fan of the keyboard or trackpad, it seems to be style over substance to me. Well, I can tell you this, uh, Sam, I've used this. Uh, for about a year now, more than a year, about a year, right? And I can tell you is I'm a big fan of the keyboard. I like it. I love the touchpad. It's a really responsive haptic touchpad. So I have no issue with that. And then as far as the capacitive row, well, I, I kind of, it's okay. Would I prefer physical keys? Probably, probably would prefer that. But having said that, used it, I have, I've had no issues. Now, when you do press this, you do get those function keys. So right now the function keys are there, but when you press that, you get all your volume up, mute button, volume down, all that stuff, uh, keyboard backlight, all that stuff, print screen. Again, maybe might've been better with physical keys. One of the things they did this was, the reason they did this was for the thermal considerations. So we'll see.
So Michael is saying Latitude 9440 would be a larger size or large size with similar features. Yeah. And again, it's going to have a pretty hefty price tag as well. That's for sure. So Ghost is saying, I'm sure Dell is watching your video and taking notes of the comments. Well, I can tell you that Dell, they, they do watch. So they and they're fantastic, by the way. Not that, not that I want to say they're bad. No, they're good guys. And I tell you, real professionals to work with as far as the team over there. Okay, so let me, didn't register my face. Okay, whatever. So let's, um, let's see if we can try to get Geekbench working here on a, on a, refresh, in a restart here. Sometimes that, that's what does it. Okay. So what, we're waiting for that to load in. Boom. Okay. So why is it still, why is the, the light still going there? Okay, now they're off. Okay. So let's run the CPU benchmark again. We'll see. Hopefully we'll get a result. It's amazing. Uh, and according to William, it's amazing how much last year's model depreciated in value compared to what it originally sold for. I put a link, by the way, for those interested in last year's model as well. Uh, over at Best Buy, because Best Buy, and I'll put myself down there, Best Buy has a really decked out one with the OLED, graphite, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I think it's got a terabyte of storage. All in, I think, $16.99, which comes in cheaper than this one. But it does have uh, the 12th gen, right? So it has the 12th gen 1260p, the i7-1260p, and again, 28-watt CPU. Um Geekbench 6 is broken, not the laptop. The model has some issues last year. Hope they got them fixed. We'll see. We'll see. It's the same design. It's the same design, so we'll have to see. I'm hoping the upgrade to the 13th gen will address some of the issues. I think the issues are going to be heat. We'll see how hot it gets. We'll see the fan noise, of course, when under performance mode. Again, but I've used the, the 12th gen model last year, pretty much all to this year, obviously. And I've, I've loved it, to be honest with you. I've liked it a lot. All right, so good luck, Dominique, is saying the, back, the black or the carbon fiber version of this laptop will be good. So I have both the, this is the, the graphite model here. And again, I showed you, and I'll bring it on here again. And we can see the difference between the IPS display, which this one has, it's a touch display. And this will do a little bit better on battery life. And then this is, of course, the, IPS, the uh, OLED display, as we see here. And you can see the two here side by side. And again, they're both beautiful. But again, this one is not going to be as sharp or as vibrant when you compare it to the OLED. So this is 3456 by 2160, 16 to 10, of course. This is 1920 by 1200. And again, if you want to do better on battery life, this is an excellent display in its own right. And they also sell it with a 4K plus or UHD plus resolution. And yes, we're looking at the same webcam. And that was a big criticism I had last year, and we'll have it again this year, is why didn't they update the camera? And again, it has to do with sticking with this design, I guess. But again, you don't know what next year is going to have in store. And again, also keep in mind that when this came out, we were right around the, the pandemic. So this had already been in the works, um, these as far as this design. But when the pandemic hit, that sort of threw out threw a monkey wrench into any plans they had going forward. Usually this stuff is about 40, 48 months in advance or whatever it is. Uh, so that sort of delayed everything, the pandemic. So just keep that in mind. But I think next year, 2024, we're going to see, and again, I didn't get the score, but we'll try again later. All right, let's uh, let's move on with this. So, and I guess we'll, 2024, we'll see some new stuff, I think. I, I think it's time, especially with the XPS 15. All right. And then, by the way, tomorrow, like I said, I do have the XPS 17 9730 coming in. It has a vapor chamber cooling. That one also has a 13th gen processor, has RTX graphics. We'll talk about that. 4000 series, we'll talk about that. Yeah, Panda Panda Memories, yeah. I'm trying to forget it. OLED, it is OLED. Is battery life bad or is it manageable? It's manageable. I, I did my battery test on the OLED model last year. So check out my video. Again, when I'm done, I'll link it or just go to my channel. I've got videos on that. 
And then let me load in. We'll, we'll do some benchmarks here while we're doing that. So let me load in Cinebench. Let's do R15. That's an easy one, as we know. That'll just be a quick and dirty one. And then we'll get some more as we go along here tonight. All right. So yours was pretty bad as far as the OLED. Now, keep in mind, whenever you're talking about battery life, it just depends how you use it. And that's one of the things I want to start more harping on because just because when I'm running a battery test on, say, PC Mark 10, which is what I use, the battery mark, uh, I'm sorry, the um, modern office battery test, the video playback test, the gaming test, the Microsoft Office test that they have in the suite of tests, uh, those results are simulated results. So when you're simulating that kind of stuff, it's one thing. But in real world usage, and, and again, everybody's use case is a little bit different. You're, so you might get different results. So not everybody is going to have the same results. All right, so that is uh, loaded here. Let's load that and then let's get this going. So again, your mileage may vary just depending on what you're doing, right? And again, everybody's use case, how bright is your display? How are you, how bright are you keeping it? Um, there's a lot of factors going into that. And, and again, OLED right off the bat is gonna use a little bit more power because it's going to be, uh, that's just the way it is. And one of the benefits of OLED is you're getting a very color accurate display, you're getting excellent coverage of the color gamut. And then of course, you are getting uh, a lot of the things that OLED brings, the 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 high contrast, the, the extremely deep blacks, the the vibrancy of the colors, everything is super, super awesome on it. I, I absolutely love the OLED displays. Okay, so Michael's thinking that the 3.5K OLED is the same price as the UHD Plus. Do you have any thoughts on which is better? The UHD Plus is gonna be gorgeous, but I've mentioned this in the past. I think UHD Plus or 4K Plus 3840 by 2400 might be a little bit overkill. Even the OLED might be overkill at 3.5K, but 4K plus is definitely overkill for a lot of people. Just depends on what you need it to have. And again, these are pretty si similar results. We saw the frames per second here as far as the OpenGL. But I, you know, I don't know if you necessarily have to because if you're looking at the Full HD Plus, which I have here, you're going to do better on battery life and it's still a very nice display. And let's keep in mind, 13.4 inch display, you're not going to see the huge difference between, uh, you know, 4K and Full HD Plus. It's just not. It, it's just the screen is too small. So there may be just overkill and you're just going to waste your battery life. That's just, you know, one thing to consider. All right, so when we go here, we can see here 88.69, which is pretty typical of uh, the Iris XE graphics. And again, I've mentioned time and time again, Iris XE graphics are just a little bit long in the tooth. Hopefully next year, hopefully we'll get some improved graphics going forward, okay? Although it's not terrible, but I think they've been passed by AMD's Radeon graphics, and I think the integrated solution here has to improve. All right, so this is testing the CPU, and this, of course, even though it says 16 cores, it's not 16 cores, this is 12 cores. I guess they're doing the extra threads or whatever, but when we do the Cinebench R20 and R23, it'll show the correct, the correct cores and so forth. All right, so this will give us our score, and I'll take a screenshot, 950. Yeah, it's a little low. I'm not sure what's going on. So let's, uh, let's take a screenshot of that. Okay, and then let's close this. Let's save that. And then let me go back to the downloads here. And let's go to the R20. Darian has never had an OLED bigger than my phone. Pretty excited for it. You know, it's, you know, I say once you go OLED, you don't go back. I even like it better than mini LED. And I, I may be in a minority, I don't know. I do have a mini LED on the MacBook 14 that I have. And I have the mini LED from the 16 inch that I have video coming up on the MSI Prestige 16 Studio that has a mini LED display. It's beautiful, beautiful. But I just prefer, I prefer AMOLED or OLED. It's just to me, pops it's just something hard to quantify it just pops right so i like it all right so let's uh let's get this going
Let's accept that. Let's run that. Andrew, is it bad to use the laptop always connected to the power? I do. I mean, I connect it to my dock. Um, you know, look, the battery is going to wear down after a while anyway, but I, I don't think it's bad. I don't know. Long term, maybe. I don't know. But I have not had any issues. Does this unit have a Gen 4 support? It's supposed to. I know the motherboard supports it, and we'll test the SSD on this right after we're done with this. So we'll test it out. Mini LED isn't as mature as OLED yet. Yeah, and they have the blooming effect. That's another problem that o that uh, mini LEDs are exhibiting. Uh, OLED, of course, people are always going to be concerned with the screen burning. I have not experienced it, and I have many, many OLED displays here. Now, in all fairness, I do have an OLED display in my LG TV upstairs in my bedroom, and that does have some screen burning, and that's about four years old or five years old or whatever it was when it came out. So I don't know, you know, as far as what these laptops, as far as the technology has advanced, I have not experienced any kind of, of um, screen burning on these laptops. So just keep that in mind. MacBooks can have the ghosting or the blooming effect or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I don't really notice it too much on the MacBook Pro 14. And I believe that's that's a mini LED, right? Just correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm so tired right now. Who knows what I'm saying? But there you go. All right. Okay. So so according to Andrew, uh, he has this ver he has this version coming in tomorrow. All right. I'm nervous considering I haven't seen anyone benchmark the 13th gen yet. I'm hoping to use that for some fairly intensive bioinformatics uh, included. It needed the 32. So I guess. Um, we're going to see hopefully good performance out of it. Again, I just took this out of the box. So whatever we're getting here, let's take it with a grain of salt. I still have to update everything and so forth. You can see this result here. So let's uh, get that. I can't get the Geekbench to work because of Geekbench being Geekbench. Should we try it one more time? I'm getting frustrated here. I want to see the Geekbench score. And of course, as soon as I end the live stream and run it again, it'll work. So let's try it one more time here. And then we'll test the SSD. So we'll see. OLED will be 400 nits versus 500 nits in the LCD. That is correct, or the IPS, right? But with what? But with that difference, not sure if it'll be affecting using it outdoor or brightness areas. So they're bright enough for me, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're both pretty bright. I, I, I can tell you this, that this one is, again, 500 nits rated. This is a 400. Uh, let me see what's going on here. This is not getting as bright as normal. Oh, because I'm not plugged in maybe. I don't know. But this is the IPS for those are LCD. Also touch display. This is the OLED here. Both also touch. All right, let's see. Hopefully we'll get this result in. If you turn out the lights and say McAfee three times, the benchmark will work. <laughs> I got to get this 9440 in, guys. Everybody has it except me. We just received the new Latitude 9440 with the keyboard that is based on the XPS 13 Plus. Overall, it's a very nice keyboard, and maybe more Dell laptops will start using this. I think you are right, my friend. Yeah, I can't wait to get the review unit into the studio. Again, I for those joining us late, I did get a preview of it. I was very impressed with the aesthetics for the design. They took a lot of the design cues from this and they moved it onto that business laptop. So we'll see. Glad you got yours in. Do you think the U-series processor would have made more sense? In some ways, it does. I think it'll use a less power. It'll, use, it'll generate less heat. I do have the U-series base uh, the, uh, on the XPS 13 9315 here as well. Maybe the U-series might have been a good idea. I don't know maybe an option to add that, but again, they'll cannibalize their XPS 13 series as opposed to the plus. So I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we'll maybe do better on the thermals. That would be a pretty interesting thing, right? So maybe that might be the way, the way to go. So according to William, the screen burn in is, is the, uh, the screen is the screen burn in is built in obsolescence. The way manufacturers can get people to upgrade TVs and PCs more often you know, it's just maybe a product of the 
of the technology, right? So I do have I, I do have burn in on one of my OLED TVs, uh, my LG. I don't have anything as far as burn in on my laptop. So go figure. I don't know, but maybe it is. You know, they like cars, right? They make things to last only a certain amount of time, then they break, and then you have to eventually fix it, or maybe just get a new car altogether. All right, OLED. According to uh, Fantasy TKY, OLED touchscreen does it have the cross hatching digitizer like the one on asus no this is not i think this is actually a really good one they're using and i believe it's made by samsung if i'm not mistaken um so i don't think it has that that barn door effect or whatever you're trying to refer to or as you're saying cross hatching digitizer it, the cross hatching digital art on the more asus is so terrible that it makes the display look 40p in in a light alike in a light background well we'll see Oh, we finally got a result. And I think we need to up, we need to, because this is a low score, and I think I know why. I think I need to update the My Dell app to get us to get us the um power, the Dell power settings, because I think that's one of the things going on here. Why is this? Oh, I see. Oh, here it is. Now it's showing the power. Okay. All right, so that's the power here. Okay, so let me show you. All right, so we were on the optimized mode. Let's go to the ultra performance mode, and we should get a better, better um, result. So I already took a screenshot of that. Let's try it again. Hopefully, at least it's working, right? At least we're getting that working. So let's just try it one more time. So this one, of course, and when we're talking about the full HD plus, this had the core i5, I believe in this one. Let me double check. I don't remember. So let me go to the system. And this one had the 12th gen. Yeah, this is the i5-1240. I left a link for the Dell website. If you want to get the i5 model from last year, it's still there. It starts, I believe, at 899 which is a tremendous deal to me so you know i think that's a steal considering this one is really really good even with the i5 and definitely will use less battery uh, as far as the display because it's full hd plus it's a lcd or ips and i think it's a good deal so again link of course in the description below hi can you please tell me if you recommend me buying a thinkpad t14 gen 2 t14 s gen 2 for coding I think you'll be fine. Ryzen 7 5850U. Ryzen's are pretty good. Again, we're talking about Dell tonight, but you should be okay with that for coding. Anybody want to chime in? You can chime in. Uh, you might want to install the Chrome browser and then run Geekbench. It might have something to do with the browser. Just a thought. I don't know. I've tried that. It still didn't work on other laptops. So let's see. But at least we got this working, uh, William. We got one result, although I didn't have the power setting on. Uh, on the ultra performance we had it on the optimized so it's definitely not going to give you the most power that it's capable of we're going to run it again and i'll run it for my full review as well so just keep that in mind all right keyboard g saying the crt monitors could burn in also hence the screen saver actually we're saving the screens from burning yeah the screen savers are automatically set to come on pretty quick on these on these oled so that's another way you can prevent the the static image from staying there and burning in having a screen saver come on after a couple of minutes or so yeah you're breathing a sigh of relief you're gonna do fine this is gonna be fine it's it should be i would say about 10 10 percent or so better than the 12th gen so we'll see we'll see we'll see don't worry andrew you'll be fine and plus i'm these are not the benchmarks you want to be using to compare it so again i just took it out of the box i still need to update stuff and you're also connected to stuff here that's also might be taking away some of the performance is the best one i can find where i live do you recommend me another more than this it just depends um are you talking about are you still talking about that again again you'll be fine i think you'll be fine with that that's a nice laptop i've reviewed the think pads in the past with the t14s so i think you'll be fine you know sometimes it's what you can get right what's available all right, but let's stick on topic, people. Let's stick to the Dell for now. I have stuff from Lenovo coming, so stay tuned on that.
But we have 74 of you. Good to see everybody as we're benchmarking it here. You can see this is the Dell XPS 13 Plus and Platinum. This is the graphite model. This is last year's model with the Quarry 5. This is this year's refresh with the i7. This is 1360p, 1240p. So you see the difference here. But again, some people are just, they don't know which one to get. Do you want to get the graphite? Do you want to get the platinum i like the platinum just because it shows less fingerprints it's cleaner although this is pretty gorgeous in itself okay so that being said let's hopefully get a good result here well we got a pretty much the same result <laughs> let's see here so i'm not sure what's going on here i think this needs to be updated 73 23 1927 actually went down on the single core and it could be throttling it could be something happening so we'll have to see so let me take a screenshot of that and i'll update everything and and because i think we should be getting closer to ten thousand or so as we saw last year right should be closer to ten thousand this should be about i guess you know over like 23 2400 at least and that's what we had on this score, 22, 62, and 73, 42. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Again, we could also do this. Let me um, let me bring it over here. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this test later when things are more settled down. And then, of course, let's close this. Let's test the, the SSD here. And let's go here. So this is going to see the, I have the, now, so here's the other thing. I went with the 512, okay? I didn't go anything bigger because I'm going to update this myself probably. So I don't need a bigger, uh, bigger SSD, but we'll, we'll test the speeds right now. And we'll, uh, yeah, it's got the same 720p webcam. It's a, it's a, it's a HD, not full HD. It's also a Windows Hello. We can take a look at it in a little bit. I don't, I don't think, Yogi, I don't think we'll see anything physically changed on this. And this is some pretty fast speeds, by the way. I don't think we'll see any physical changes whatsoever. It's exactly the same exterior as last year. The only difference is going to be the processor. Uh, the camera is going to be the same. The port selection is the same. Same Thunderbolt 4 ports. Still no headphone jack, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. So Michael was leaning towards the graphite, but the platinum does look really nice. Yeah, it does. They both look good, in my opinion. So the graphite does look good. This is the platinum. Yeah, those speeds are looking good so far. 7,000 plus for the read. We'll see how the write is. And that's for 512 gigabyte SSD. Again, upgradable on the Plus model. Now, RAM, of course, is going to be soldered in. It's not upgradable. I did show the internals of this last year, of course, so I'm not going to, we don't need to open it up. It's the same internals as last year. So, again, upgradable SSD, not upgradable RAM. So just keep that in mind. So, Fantasy likes still loves Windows Hello. It's so good after trying it for the first time on my LG Gram 2 and 1. Yeah, once you get that Windows Hello, it's pretty, pretty nice, pretty convenient. Platinum is good because it's not another gray laptop. So the Platinum to me just looks so, so clean looking, so, so sleek looking. Um, you can see it here. I mean, that thing is just absolutely gorgeous. To me, it is absolutely stunning looking. And, and the graphite looks good too. I mean, I have a tough time just deciding which one. I, I think I lean towards the platinum. I think I lean towards the platinum. But we'll see. You know, they just there. this just got redesigned last year. Maybe next year they'll upgrade the camera. We'll see. This is what we, you know, we're dealing with. Uh, this was a first gen product, right? Because of the redesign. Plus is the first time they're using the Plus model. So now this is the first iteration, the first refresh. I'm not expecting anything physically to change other than whatever's internally, right? So that's one of the reasons they did that, I guess. The other thing is, you know, to go in and have to redo the camera would mean you have to redo the design, and they're not up. To, they're not ready for that yet. 
Question, did last year's model support Gen 4? It's If not, then this one is additional improvement over last year. Yeah, the the keep the the motherboard supported it, but I don't remember if we got these such good speeds last year. So maybe a better SSD. I'll have to look at my um, review video to see. These are very very fast speeds, good reads and writes. So we'll see. Now, as far as a full HD, you know, camera, as far as that is concerned, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, it'll get the job done is what I'm trying to say. Is it good for 2023? No. I mean, we want to see a 1080p camera. We'll get a look at that in a moment. All right. Um, G unit, I'm waiting on Dell, but I definitely uh, I've been I've talked to Dell. I will get one as soon as they get me a review unit. I will let you know. And of course, we'll do everything what we don't normally do. And thank you, Raphael, for reminding everybody. Great way to support the channels. Hit the like button. That is right. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're having a good time and you're enjoying this live stream, why not hit the the uh, the thumbs up here? Because that definitely helps it get spread out over YouTube. I have an itchy nose tonight. I don't know why. Will you review? Yes, I will review the Dell uh, Latitude 9440, as I mentioned. Which one is better, the XPS 13 Plus or the X1 Carbon Gen 10? So very, very good question. You know, those are both well, two of my favorites, actually. It just depends, right? So it just depends. Uh, well, that's that's a whole discussion in and, of, in and of itself. Maybe we'll have a comparison. And good to see Josh here. You own last year's model, but can't do the function row. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier, Josh. This... Um, this is this is the one thing I wish they would just bring back is the physical row, right? I like the haptic touchpad. The keyboard's great. the 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 capacitive row is something I would have. I would look to maybe go back to a physical keys as you like as you get on the traditional one. Now, by the way, for those that didn't see, I, I collaborated with Josh and uh, on his channel for a laptop battle under four hundred dollars. I lost, but. <laughs> Josh won, but um, you should go over there. Part one and part two are up, and Jared's Tech, so I know a lot of you like Jared's Tech as well. Check it out, okay? Carbon ha also has the physical function row. Yes, yes. So, right, and so you get, on the carbon, you get that physical function row. I I, one of the biggest surprises on this is the keyboard. I actually like the keyboard, but as far as the um, the keyboard on the X1 Carbon Gen 10, hopefully we'll get Gen 11 soon, um, it's good. Now, some people have criticized it of not being as good as it was in the past. Still, I think has about 1.5 millimeters of key travel, hopefully. I don't remember if it went down to 1.2. But either way, it's still one of the best keyboards out there. Programmers must have the function row. Yeah. If you're a programmer, absolutely. And yes, this does have a haptic touchpad, which I actually like. So I do like the touchpad on this. Okay, so we got our result here on the SSD. Very, very good. So nothing to worry about there. All right, let's take a look at the camera. Let's let's talk about the 720p camera. So again, it is an IR camera. It is Windows Hello compatible. And again, for a 720p, it is not terrible. But again, we're in 2023 and we should have 1080p. There's no doubt about it. And again, even if you have a small bezel here, which they do, I don't buy it that they can't put a 1080p camera there because we've seen other brands do it in even same amount of space maybe even smaller i don't know the idea that is still the smallest bezel the infinity edge display you could still there is an ability to get a an ir camera into that space so they just haven't changed it yet now having said that it's it's definitely passable right you can definitely use it but you can also use something like the 4K, uh, the one I have here, 
the external one, the ultra sharp, what do they call it? The Dell ultra sharp webcam 4K. In fact, I could probably show you the difference if I bring it onto the stream here. Let me see here, hold on. So this is what I'm talking about. This is gonna be, and I'll bring it in. I'm not in there yet. So this one, it's a little dark. Again, I have to adjust the settings. But the one on the right is the 4K, and it's got the auto framing and all that stuff. And then the one on the left is the Dell XPS 13 Plus. And you can see the colors are gonna be better. It's just gonna be much sharper, right? You can see it's much sharper. Um, so that is, and again, has a nice little cap you can use on it and so forth. It's a magnetic cap, but you know, this is the difference. And again, this is an external solution as opposed to the internal solution. So there you go. All right. So that is the difference if a 4k versus the 720p. All right. So let me, um, take this off here. And again, it, it's fine. I'm not going to say it's not usable, but there are other solutions. And they, again, I would prefer 1080p. All right, that's the camera. We'll test microphones and all that in the upcoming review. Okay, so according to Andrew, it seems like a great laptop for analytic coding, but I could be way off on that, on that regarding programming, Python, open source programs. It just depends on what you need it to do. And again, Josh was right. You may need a physical row. I don't know. I don't know. It just depends on what you you need to be able to do with it. All right, let's uh, let's go back here. Let's do a five minute Cinebench test. And I I up I I found out what the reason from that Lenovo we had a problem. I didn't have the most up to date Cinebench, and now I do. So I think this is yeah this is the one this is the most recent version of the R twenty three. So I think the reason I didn't get a proper score was because I didn't have the most up-to-date version on that. And once I did that, I got a very good score. And I'll show you that in that Yoga 7i video that I'm gonna have on the 16 inch. So that's coming as well. All right, so let this load in here as we have about 60 of you watching. And again, I'm gonna have a recorded video on this. I'll edit this down. I'll release an unboxing video for those that don't wanna sit through an hour plus as we normally do here. And then we'll be able to go from there. And let me just make sure that this is in the right power setting once again. So let's go here, power. Yeah, so we're on the ultra performance. Charging mode being managed by Dell Dynamic Charge Policy. Intelligent battery extender, peak shift. All right, so we'll just keep it. So allow my Dell to synchronize thermal management mode with Windows performance slider and vice versa. All right, I'm gonna allow that so I can only have it all in one place basically. All right, so let's uh, let's go to the downloads here. Let's load up Cinebench R23 and let's get that up and running. Does this have a fingerprint reader? It does, the fingerprint, the power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner. All right, let's uh, let's go to the advanced benchmark settings here. Hold on, and let's do let's go to preferences. Let's do a custom render. Um, let's do uh, five minutes. Let's do a five minute test, right? And then we'll do a custom five minutes, and let's do the multi core. Okay, so this is a five minute test instead of the normal ten minutes. Let's see what we get here. Again, I haven't updated anything. I haven't run it under, uh, if there's any updates, which I think there are going to be. So we'll see. We'll see what the performance numbers are. So it does have a fingerprint reader, Eric. I started taking Zoom, according to Keyboard G, I started taking Zoom calls from my iPad mountain eye level on a boom arm. Camera is great and you could look at people in their face. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. No problem, Eric. Along those lines, William, the capacitive buttons probably show up better on the graphite. So, I mean, you know, it's lighter color here, maybe a little bit better. I've had no issue, I mean, seeing it, the uh, function row. So, 
So it definitely shows up. So uh, Jim just chimed in. Uh, did you say did you say anything comparing the full HD to the UHD OLED? I'm really curious about the full HD quality. Any good? It's excellent. It's really good. It's a nice um, full HD plus display. Uh, I've had no issues with it. I've had this for about a year or so. So no issues. I have the OLED here. I've used the OLED last year as well on the Platinum. This is the graphite. So the benefit of the full HD plus is going to be Better battery life, number one. I showed you numbers in the video. And then, of course, you're going to... Uh, it, it, and this is, by the way, the Core i5 1240p. And you won't have to contend with any screen burning, although I've never had any screen burning. But it also gets brighter. This is a 500-nit display. This is 400-nit. That's the difference between IPS and OLED here. My preference, of course, is OLED. I think it's just the deeper blacks, the more vibrant colors... The better, the better look pop. In other words, it, it looks better to me. All right, so that's still running. We're gonna do only a five minute test today. We'll see what kind of result. Trying something a little bit different, custom test here. You can see it here. Okay. And again, for those joining us late, this says the Core i7-1360P, 12 cores, 16 threads, 8 efficient cores, and 4 performance cores. Now, let me test the... the now, I hear the fans going. Let me test it. And then we could also maybe bring out the thermal imaging camera as well. Because I'm going to be putting that all in the upcoming review. So you're looking at about 48, 49 decibels. Definitely noticeable, but again, we're in ultra performance mode under load. Okay, now I want to check out, and we'll put this to the side for now, and I want to check out the heat that it's generating right now. So we'll get our thermal imaging camera out. All right, so let's just load this in. Let's give it a second. So I definitely hear the fans aren't overly annoying, but you definitely hear them. Okay, let's go to this camera. So it's getting around 52 right around here. So right around there, 52. And then So where the heat exhaust is over here, it's about 58 degrees Celsius. So you definitely can feel it here. Yeah, it definitely heats up over here. So again, one of the things you have to be concerned with on a thin and light chassis is going to be heat and heat dissipation, right? Let's take a look at this side. So, you know, just have to understand 
the limitations of the design. So about 53 there. So about 51 over here, where the plug is into this Thunderbolt port. So it does heat up. I did notice it getting heat up. And we got a pretty good score here. So we're seeing 10,607. And again, I only did a five minute test on this one. So that's a pretty decent score, more in line of what, and I think that'll go up once I update everything, get everything, all the drivers and everything updated. And then if there's any, kind of firmware update to worry about. Let's do the single core five minute test as well. That's a pretty good score. So over 10,000, 10,607. I believe there's two fans in this, but I'll, I'll, we can take a look at it in a moment. I'm not opening it up. We did it last year, but I will maybe link to the video and we can take a look at it. So, it can get about 48 decibels in terms of the the fan noise. And then you're looking at, depending where you are, 55, 56 degrees Celsius in terms of the temperatures, external temperatures. And of course, I will run the internal temperatures in the upcoming review. So again, we have a lot to do on this laptop, of course. But again, the trade-off is, is going to be in such a thin and light chassis, the design how does it dissipate the heat, right? So that's always going to be a major concern anytime you get a laptop this size. So just keep that in mind. All right. Ooh, this is a lot of fun tonight, huh, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. If you need more, if you need... If you need RAM for VMs, then get more RAM. Yeah, so right now, this has, just so you know, this is thir this is 32 gigabytes of RAM on this model. So that's pretty good. Now, I believe you can go up to 64. Let's take a look at the specs here. So this is 32 on this one, but I believe, well, is am I thinking of the Dell XPS 15? I'm not sure. 32 might be the way to go. Can somebody check, to, can this go up to 64 or is 32 the most you can go? I think you can do 64 in this. Let me check real quick. Hold on, people. Let me see here. Let me go to Dell's website. Let's see what the most we can max it out on. And, and while we're looking at the specs here. So if I'm on the 13th gen processor and then I'm picking here, so no, 32 on this one, 32 is the most, okay? So strike what I said, 64 is for the XPS 15, okay? So that, that answers that question. But 32 on an ultra portable, I, I'll take it, I'll take it. How do the function rows work, Isabella, right? So is it backlit E-Link? E you know, it's, um, it's LED, I guess. And if you can look at it right here, it uses pulse width modulation. That's why it's flickering a little bit. And if you want to get a close up of it, this is what it looks like. Now it's not flickering in real life. It's the cameras, but it works by pressing the function row function key here, and that'll change it to the function. Again, it's hard to see because of that camera. This one might be a little bit easier to see. So if I hit that, oh, wrong one. If I hit that, you see it brings up the function row. And then when I let it go, that's the, you got the delete button, insert, and home, print screen, extended out to monitors and so forth, volume, the brightness up and down, keyboard backlight, pause, play button, mute button, volume up and down, and mute and escape. Okay, so there you go. 
720p camera, Jay Valencia, good to see you. Yes, thank you, Michael. 32 is the max. I, You know, I was thinking about the, um, the XPS 1595 30 on that when I was thinking about that. So 32, and again, it is not upgradable by the user, so just keep that in mind. And as far as what the internals look like, I can show you in a moment. While this is running, I don't want to do anything, but um, I can go over to the website, or I can go to the YouTube video that I did, and I can get to the internals here. And maybe I can save the, do a screenshot. Let me see here. Or I can just tell you. Let me see, Dell, I'm going to just do a search here on my website, Dell, or on the YouTube, rather, XPS 13 Plus. There's our unboxing. Here's, here's my uh, six months later. I probably showed it in there. So let me go to the, and again, I put, I put chapters in all the videos, except this one, of course. Let me just, I don't, come on, I did not put chapters and that's the only one. Okay, so here's a video that I did, the review. And let me go to the chapters, internals. Okay, so here we go. And I'm looking at it. So there are two fans. There are two fans. And I can bring it onto the stream here. Let's see here. And that's it right there. Magic. That's the internals. There's the SSD and there are the speakers on there and then there's of course the battery okay there you go all right so let's see where we are let's stay on point santiago i i, I don't want to get off point tonight let's stay on let's we're talking dell tonight we can do a separate general you know question kind of thing on a different different one i know you have a lot of questions all right so let's um let's get this result this will be coming in in a moment and then we'll take some more of your questions as well so according to santiago gutierrez who is different than Santiago Garay's Gallego. I know where I was just talking to another Santiago. This machine is good, but I'm still disappointed with Dell's 5000 series. They're made of plastic like the, like the 5420. The Elite books are much more, that just went away. The Elite books are much more premium in their versions. Just depends which one you go with, right? Yeah, Elite books are really good. I like the, um, you're talking about the, are you talking about the Latitude? because some of them are very premium. The 9440, hopefully we'll get that in soon. So pretty decent result here. 1813 single core and 10,607 multi-core. So let's take a screenshot of that. So we did the R23. Okay, that's more in line and more like what we'd expect. And again, I'll do more testing. If the constant, no, yeah. So Michael, keep this in mind. What you're seeing here is pulse width modulation because of the camera in real life this is not moving it's static so don't worry now it is static and then when you hit the function key the right there it brings up the function row okay so for those wondering but for those who see flickering like over here on this camera it's not it's not flickering at all it's it's actually static but it doesn't come across on the stream because of the camera setting it's just through the pulse width modulation that it's using How is this different from the 2022 model? It has a updated processor. That's the only difference. So instead of having a 12th gen P series processor, this has a 
13th gen P series. This is specifically the Core i7 1360P. As we're already at an hour and 24 minutes. All right, what do you oops, what do you think people about this? Again, you can go with the last year's model save some money. In fact, we can start we can go over to the website here. If I go to Dell's website and if I put in Dell I, and then in fact, let's go to Google first. I should probably put Chrome in when we're done. Okay, so if I go to L XPS 13 plus, let's see, let's go to the website here. Here's Dell's website. Again, link in the description below. And last year, and I just want to show you the difference in price. What is going on up there? See, that's why I don't want to use Bing, this Bing crap. How do I get rid of that? Let's go. <laughs> I may have to download Chrome. This is ridiculous. This Bing crap here. Dell XPS 13 plus. Let's just see if this comes up here. Okay, so we're back here. Okay, so I don't like this shopping crap. So it starts at $899, right? So $899 gets you a core i5 1240p, that's a 12th gen. And you're getting eight gigabytes of RAM. It's not upgradable. It's LPDDR5 RAM, by the way. And then you get 512, which is what we have here today. And that's for the full HD touch. It's 899. If you want to go down to the non-touch, I think that's only available with a 13th gen. This is really annoying, that shopping thing. Okay, so that's 13th gen. So 13th gen, so those who want to get for $899, basically like the one we have here is what is basically coming out to. Except that, I think this one, let me check here. This one might have, I don't know the RAM situation. Let's see. Let's go to the system here. So the RAM on this, oh, this is 16. So if I were to say 16 here, automatically brings you to the 13th gen. So for those, for that 899, you're stuck with the eight gigabytes is what they're, they're making you do. But they're giving you the touch display as opposed to the non-touch, so that's okay. Although some people like the non-touch, uh, because they don't care for the touch display, I guess. And it might be a little bit more matte. But again, I like touch, so that's just me. And that's platinum. You could also get it in graphite, I think. So that would actually ship out tomorrow, $8.99. But we're talking about the new one here, and that's $14.99. And the $14.99 gets you 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512, full HD plus touch, and that's $14.99. So what I went with, just to give you an idea, is 32, 512, because I can upgrade that myself. OLED, 13.4 inch, 3.5K OLED, 3456 by 2160 in platinum. And that comes in at 1849 plus tax here in Nevada. So there it goes. Just for thanks for the clarification. I get it. Just wondering if that would be annoying to be lit up while watching. No, you don't have to worry about it. Now, I don't think there's any way for you to turn it off, though. I know some people were asking me that last year. Is there a way to turn that off? And I don't think you can. Phones come with 12 gig of RAMs these days. So just a matter of your need. I, I would recommend for most people to go with 16, right? You want a minimum of 16, although some people are perfectly fine with eight. It just depends on what you need, what your budget is. For 899, it's kind of hard to say no to this. With that design and 12th gen P series processor, it's Core i5, it's fine. Might be fine for a lot of people. I don't know. It's just, just everybody has different needs, right? Wow, so we got a lot done today. Of course, we are got a lot more to do. I have the XPS 17 90, 9730 coming. That is vapor chamber cooling, 40, 4,000 series, uh, 40 series um, GPU. I don't remember which one. I Let me see which one is coming. Now it's going to bother me. So I, this is what I have coming. So I'm going to have Core i7 13700H, 
32 gigabytes of RAM, which should be upgradable, one terabyte SSD, RTX 4070, 60 watt, UHD plus, and I'll have more to say on that when it comes in. Okay, so that is coming. It also has vapor chamber cooling, something the XPS 15 does not have. So we're going to call it a live stream here. Yeah, Joey, it's a lot to pay, right? You're paying for the aesthetics, maybe. A lot of it is looks. They're nice-looking laptops. There's no question. All right, so I want to thank the moderators for doing such a good job. It's going to be a lot more work for me to test everything, and I can't wait to get my full review to use. Full review. For, full review. I'm tongue-tied here tonight. Uh, so that's coming. And I, again, like I said, I have the XPS 1797. 30. I also have the Dell XPS desktop 8960 coming this weekend, hopefully, if get, getting all that done. I also have their, their, their 6K display. I can't wait to show you that one. And then I have a few other, I have other stuff, Lenovo stuff. It's all coming up, people. So uh, thank you so much. I thank for everybody who donated through the Super Chat. And I want to thank um, all the moderators for do doing such a great job. I will see everybody in the next live stream. And uh, have a great rest of your evening, afternoon, or morning. And we will see you next time. So I'll see everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.